Hello Hyrulians! Cooking in Breath of the Wild can be complicated, but today I'll simplify it for you and make your life easier. We'll learn the best dishes to make for each bonus, attack, speed, hearts, whatever, and we'll learn how to easily find those materials needed for those dishes no matter how far you are in the game. I'm Nico and I'm making a 100% Zelda channel on 100%ing Zelda games. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and if you want more Zelda content, I hope you consider subscribing or at least checking out the channel. <sighs> I need to start by saying that cooking may seem complicated, but once you learn what each material does, it's pretty straightforward. Each material cooked does one specific thing to your dish no matter what combination you cook them. For example, a spicy pepper cooked will give you one heart and cold resistance for two and a half minutes. A raw prime meat cooked will give you three hearts and add 30 seconds to your dish. Hylian rice cooked will give you two hearts and add one minute to your dish. So, if you cook all three, you'll get a dish that's six hearts with cold resistance for four minutes. That's basically how cooking works in Breath of the Wild. If we cook one material that has a bonus with another material that has a bonus, for example, if we cook a speed boost with a temporary stamina bonus, those bonuses will cancel each other out. If we cook a temporary hearts bonus with a temporary stamina bonus, then no bonus. If we cook a defense boost with an ice resistance, then no bonus. Simply put, the same material bonuses need to be cooked together. The only thing you can add to those dishes are ones that only add hearts or time like apples, palm fruit, acorn, salt, and things like that. If you're cooking critters for elixirs, the same rules apply, except you need to cook those critters with a monster part. The highest bonus Link can be boosted with is level 3. If you have a level 3 attack dish and a level 3 attack equipment, Link will still only have level 3 attack. The same rule applies for cold and heat resistance, but their highest level is level 2. With that said, you may say that some of these bonuses don't matter since you can get equipment, but you can always combine some bonuses like having high defense with an attack up or having level 3 speed boost with level 2 stealth and flame guard. I'll share my top equipment slash dish combinations towards the end of the video. In case you didn't know, there's a random chance for any dish to have an extra bonus like extra time or hearts. You'll hear this sound. If you cook after 11.30 during a blood moon, those bonuses will happen automatically. But honestly, with the dishes you're going to learn today, it doesn't really matter. In this video, we'll learn the best materials to cook for each bonus. Temporary hearts, temporary stamina, shock resistance, cold resistance, heat resistance, flame guard, Attack, Defense, Stealth, and Speed. I'll mention a few good materials for each bonus and the best places to find those materials. Then we'll talk about the best way to use some of those dishes. If you want to know exactly what each material does, Croton has a video explaining cooking in great detail. You can check the link in the description. That's where I got a lot of the cooking details from. First, Temporary Hearts. Anything with hearty in its name will give you temporary hearts. Those materials give a different amount of hearts, but my favorite to cook is hearty durians because they're very easy to find. Each cooked one will give you 4 temporary hearts, so if you cook 5, you'll get 20 temporary hearts. Cooking durians is definitely something you should do in the game no matter how far you are. Also remember that they fill your permanent hearts, so if you have 20 hearts, there's no need to cook 5 durians. You need to cook just 1 or 2. You can find about 60 in the Farron region. Go there, get them, and cook however many you need. For temporary stamina, you need to use Endora Carrots, Endora Shrooms, or Tireless Frogs. Same like temporary hearts, it doesn't matter which you're using if you want to refill your permanent stamina. However, if you want full two wheels of temporary stamina, you'll need five Endora Carrots. You get them all at the Fairy Fountain or at Satori Mountain. If you want to just fill your permanent stamina, you get Endora Shrooms south of Satori or around the Thundra Plateau. Or you can get Tireless Frogs at any wetland during the rain. But again, it's better to just cook one at a time and constantly refill your permanent stamina when needed. 
The rest of the bonuses we'll talk about each have a time limit when used. Some materials, like rice, eggs, wheat, butter, and other specific ones like that, add a specific amount of time to your dishes. But the best one is dragon horns. Dragon horns guarantee 30 minutes to any dish. Monster extract also can make 30 minute dishes, but it can also have a chance to make one minute dishes. So the best material to add to all your recipes going forward in this video is dragon horns. Dragon horns are easy to get. In a quick sum up, go to Rayola Spring in the Fran region, put a fire under a tree, sit until morning and shoot the dragon's horn. Keep doing this to get as many horns as you want. If you want more details on farming dragon horns, check the card in the corner or the link in the description. Some of you may mention that you can get electrocuted from the dragon, but with that said, you can always make dishes that give you shock resistance. The best material I would use for shock resistance is zapstrooms, because they're easy to get and they have the highest level for shock resistance. Each one gives you 2.5 minutes and you need at least 3 zapstrooms to get to level 3. And of course, add a horn if you want to make it 30 minutes. The best places to get zastrooms is in the Akala region. There's about 80 in this area. If you aren't that far in the game, you can take a small trip northwest of the Great Plateau. There's about 15 in one place south of Satori Mountain. You can also go southwest of the Great Plateau, but there's a few enemies you may have to deal with. Next, we have cold resistance. The best material to use is sun trills because they're easier to find than sizzle fin trout. The next best thing is spicy peppers. If spicy peppers equals one and sun trills equal two, you need a total of six points to get to level two cold resistance. Both materials give two and a half minutes worth for each one cooked. But of course, you can add a dragon horn to make it 30 minutes. The reason I bring up spicy peppers is because they're easy to find early in the game and sun trills are easily found later. Spicy peppers can be found everywhere like Great Plateau, Satori, southeast of the Hylia Lake, Lanayru Road East Gate, and around the Rito Village and all over Gerudo Desert. Sun trims are best found at Gut Check Rock. You find about 20. If you want to check these out for yourself, there's a link in the description for the object map I use. Next, we have heat resistance. The best to use is chill shrooms, but you can also use hydromelons. Like cold resistance, if hydromelons equal 1 point and chill shrooms equals 2, you need a total 6 points to get to level 2 heat resistance. Both give 2.5 minutes worth for each one cooked. The reason I brought up hydromelons is because they're all over Garuda Desert, and Garuda Desert is the only place needed for heat resistance. And for chill shrooms, you can get them at any cold climates, but the best place is in the Nadra snowfield. You can get more than 70. Also keep in mind that for cold and heat resistance, holding elemental weapon will increase the resistance by one level. Now for flame guard. You can only make these elixirs with two specific critters, smothering butterflies and fireproof lizards. So you need to cook them with a monster part. To get to level two flame guard, you need three smothering butterflies and the fourth can either be the lizard or the butterfly. And of course, any other monster part. But you only need level 2 flame guard to go to the northern mine or on death mountain. You'll be fine with level 1 for the rest of Elden. So to explore Elden, you really only need to cook one butterfly or lizard to get flame guard. The only reason you may want to cook more than one is to add time. Each one adds 2.5 minutes and the monster part you cook may add more. Like I mentioned before, you can add a dragon horn to any dish to make them 30 minutes. So you can cook one lizard, one bokoblin tooth and a dragon horn but you probably won't need this once you get the flame breaker gear. You get both smotherwing butterflies and fireproof lizards around Elden during the day. Just make sure you have stealth to allow yourself to get close to them. And next is stealth. The only way to get to level three is to use silent princesses. You can use three or you can use two plus two other stealth materials like silent shrooms. Each one cooked adds two minutes to the dish but again, you can just use a dragon horn to make it 30 minutes. You can get a few silent princesses from fairy fountains or Satori Mountain, and silent shrooms can be found almost anywhere. 
You can get a good amount from the forest across the river from the Riverside Stable or by the waterfall south of Dueling Peak Stable. Now for attack. Mighty Poirdy might do the most, but I would use bananas. The reason I choose bananas is because they're very easy to get and you need 4 to get to level 3. Each one cooked only adds 50 seconds, so I'll definitely cook them with a dragon horn. You get bananas from the Farron region, you get clan hideout, and you can even buy 99 from some Yiga travelers. If you need rupees to buy these bananas, you can check the card in the corner or the link in the description for my rupee farming playlist. For defense, it's pretty much the same as attack. Use 4 iron shrooms to get to level 3 and add a dragon horn to make it 30 minutes. The best place to get iron shrooms is in the forest across the river from the riverside stable. You can find almost 50 here. And finally, the best bonus is speed. I would use 3 fleet lotus seeds or swift violets, 1 swift carrot and a dragon horn to get level 3 speed for 30 minutes. You could use 4 fleet lotus seeds or swift violets or you can use a rush room instead of a swift carrot. But swift carrots are easier to get. The best place to get fleet lotus seeds is in the Lanayru wetlands and the best place for swift violets is around the Thundra Plateau. And the swift carrots can be bought in Kakariko village. There are many videos on this channel farming lots of those specific materials. You can check all those links in the description. With all that said, there are some good equipment and dish combinations that can be very useful. If you want the highest attack possible, use a level 3 attack dish with an ancient gear and an ancient weapon or guardian weapon. The ancient gear will add ancient proficiency and the weapons will be even stronger. If you like attack up, use level 3 dish and your highest defense gear. That will give you a fighting chance against any tough enemy. Speaking of tough enemies, try using defense up level 3 with your defense gear and your weakest attack. You can add some temporary hearts too. The reason I say this is to practice and learn attack patterns for those enemies until you feel comfortable fighting them. That's how I learned the Lionel attack patterns for my Lionel video. Use temporary hearts, maybe stamina, and any bonus before going into the master trials, preferably attack or defense. Speed bonus dish is the dish I use the most. I use it with attack up to defeat enemies quickly. Use speed with stealth to collect critters with no problem, or to sneak behind enemies for a sneak strike. And if you want speed, stealth, and flame guard for Elden, use one flame breaker gear, two stealth, and a speed boost dish. You can collect lizards and butterflies with no problem. And my final notes to you are to remember to use temporary hearts based on how many permanent hearts you have. Cook only one temporary stamina dish at a time. and dragon horns are the most useful material you can get. I really hope this helped, and if you have your own tips and tricks, leave them in the comments. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and if you want more Zelda content, I hope you consider subscribing or at least checking out the channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. See you next time!